Alright guys, so here's the review of the A11 Tom Rice watch. So, this is from a brand called Precidus. Hopefully I've said that right. So if you do know what it is, let me know down in the comments. So if you're wondering who Tom Rice is, he was actually a soldier in the 101st Airborne Division. And this watch they refer to on their website as the Lost Watch of D-Day. So, we'll get into a bit more detail on that as we get into the watch. But now, let's check out what you actually get in the package before we get right down into it. So, quickly show you the back of this. It actually says, got an automatic movement and the fact that it's assembled in America. And then we've got the branding on the inside. I want you to take that sleeve off. Simple cardboard box, nothing too fancy. Then we've got the watch on top. So we'll quickly take this out and show you what you get underneath, what else comes in it. Because there's a couple of little interesting bits. So first up we've got the instruction manual. I'm not going to go into that. And then on the back it tells you about getting more information on the website. Then we've got a little tag that came on the watch. Telling you what model it is. But now this is the interesting bit. What's actually in here. And then we've got this for the warranty. But as you can tell it's not just a card, something a little bit different. So we'll open it up, show you what it is. I think this is really nice because it does suit the watch. So, yep, we've got a nice little dog tag here. Which I do think is a nice touch, as I say. Just suits the style of watch really well. So obviously you just scan that QR code, and then you can sort out your warranty. It's a nice little attention to detail there. But now, let's get all this out of the way and get down to the watch. And here it is. And you can see it's definitely got that vintage look to it. Especially with the fact that there's no text on the dial at all. But we'll get into that in a bit more detail in a bit. First off, let's go over the dimensions. So we've got a diameter of 38mm, thickness of 127 lug width of 20 and then the all-important lug to lug is coming in at 452 So some pretty nice dimensions there. Obviously not the same as the original. They've been brought up to like more modern sizes. But still, pretty reasonable, I think. In terms of weight, on this strap, it's coming in at 63 grams, but there are a couple of different strap and dial options available, link in the description. When it comes to the actual case itself, we've also got drill lugs as well, which is always good. So if you do want to swap them straps out, it's easy to do. So now let's get a look at that case back and talk about that in a bit more detail. So you can see there we've got all those details that I mentioned earlier, talking about the origins of the actual watch originally this is based on. So nice little touch that. Just adds to the interest with this piece, I think. And you probably also noticed as well, we have actually got a unique number on here. And you can also see as well, we've actually got a quick release on the strap as well. So as well as having drilled lugs, we've also got the quick release. And when it comes to this strap I've got in here, it's a fairly rugged strap. It's not the most malleable, but it's still comfortable. And then the hardware, we've got polished hardware on the end. Which is slightly different to the case most of which is sandblasted, but we have actually got some little polished details on the top of the lugs. We've also got that really nice double dome crystal. We'll be checking out in a bit if it is actually sapphire. And then let's get onto the dial now, talk about this in a bit more detail. So as I alluded to earlier, there's no text on this at all. It's completely sterile, which again is in keeping with the aesthetics that we're going with for this watch. So it's a fully printed dial, nothing applied, and you can see we've got like a yellowy kind of fotine are almost on this so obviously that is going to affect the loom nice proportions on all the hands as well and a nice kind of almost sandblasted type finish on them as well to match the case and then when it comes to that crown that's also polished to match in the top of those lugs just breaking up that sandblasted finish a bit and you can see that little detail in on the bottom of the actual screw down case back too just peeking out of the bottom But now, let's check out if it is actually sapphire crystal we've got on this. Using the trusty diamond selector too. And yep, we have got sapphire crystal. Which I was pleasantly surprised by, to be honest. I wasn't expecting it to be. I was expecting it to be acrylic or possibly mineral. 
in keeping with the vintage aesthetics, but I am pleasantly surprised and I do appreciate that it is sapphire. Especially because it is that double dome as well, as you guys probably already know if you've been watching me for a while. I've got quite a few in the collection, I just love them. But now, let's check out what the loom's like on this. So you can probably just about make that out, but let's charge it up, give it a proper chance. And there we go. So, it's actually initially pretty good. Although you can see that there is a difference in the colour between the hands and the indices. So, the hands are more of a vibrant green, whereas the indices and the numbers are more muted. Obviously, there's not as much loom on the dial as there is on the hands, due to it being a fully printed dial, and obviously not enough surface area to get enough loom on there, really. That's just the way it's going to be with a fully printed dial. And also with it being this kind of faux teen around the dial as well, that also affects the loom. So it isn't as good as it could be. You can probably notice already that the dial is beginning to fade pretty quickly. So that doesn't last that long at all really. The hands hang on a little bit longer, but again because of that kind of faux teen, they don't last as long as you'd hope really. But again, it's kind of in keeping with the style of watch and the aesthetic, with it being that vintage kind of look. It was never going to be the best loom and it is pretty much what you'd expect. It definitely won't be lasting all night. So now let's talk about the movement on this, and yep, it's an NH35. So obviously we've got no date window on this, so we've got a ghost date position, pull it out once, and you will hear it ticking over just. So we'll have to pull it out again to actually get the movement to work properly. So pull it out of the second position, second hand stops, then obviously we can just change the time. Pop it back in, second hand re-engages, and then obviously we've got hand winding. All works well, as you'd expect, with the NH35. Reliable movement, no issues at all. So, you're probably wondering, how much is all this going to cost you? So, it's going to be $299, which is about £234, and about €274. Euros. Yeah, it's a little expensive for an NH35 powered watch, but I think for what you get in the overall package, it's not too bad, especially with that lovely double dome sapphire crystal. This little engraving and everything on the back, the quick release strap. It's it's a nice package, as I say, and with it being like a almost like a reissue kind of reimagining of an older watch, it's something a bit different, something interesting. But now let's show you what it's like on wrist. So here's what it looks like on my seven inch wrist, and I do really like this. I do like this strap as well, I think it suits the watch really well. Yeah, it's a little bit tougher than some straps you might be used to, but you do get used to it, and it does break in a little bit. And obviously I love that double dome crystal, especially with it being sapphire. When it comes to the case shape and the sizing, it fits pretty well on my 7 inch wrist I think, this 38mm. Obviously if you've got a bigger wrist, you could probably pull off the 42 but it is nice to give you the option. Because I know a lot of people watch my videos do like their larger watches. I get quite a lot of comments, people saying they want something 41 and above. When it comes to issues I've got with this watch, there's not really many. Obviously the loom would be nice if it was a bit better. The only other thing, possibly change these polished lugs. Just make them sandblasted like the rest of the case. But it's going to be one of those personal preference things. The only other slight issue is this strap. So obviously I've got a 7 inch wrist. And I'm on the second to last hole. If you've got a smaller than 7 inch wrist, this strap might be a little bit big for you. But it's easy enough to swap out with those drilled lugs and quick release strap. As always, the link's down in the description. But that's it for this one guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.